Ads not read by me, Mary Payne, don't necessarily reflect the views of Pink Shade. If you'd like to listen to ad free, you're going to go on over to Supercast or Patreon, and you can find the links to Pink Shade Prime at pinkshadepodcast.com. Hey y'all, welcome to Pink Shade. It's Mary Payne. It's Thursday. And normally on Thursdays, I'm doing Bravo Breakdown, but I've decided to um, redo Bravo Breakdown because on Thursdays, I don't always want to talk about Bravo. Sometimes I just want to talk to people I'm interested in. So we're thinking about rebranding. So what do you guys think about if I rename it um, Pink Pop, Pop of Pink, something with the word pink and something with the word pop or like Thirsty Thursday's already been taken, so that's not good. Y'all come at me and let me know what you think. But today, I'm so lucky because I have a major social media influencer, of which you guys know I'm out here whoring myself out day by day for Instagram followers. So hopefully, Landon of Landon <laughs> Talks is going to help me get those numbers up. Y'all, it is Landon from Landon Talks of all those great Southern phrases that you guys send me all the time. Hey, Landon. Hey, I'm so excited to be here. Oh my gosh, I keep forgetting we're on camera and I'm like looking over at my notes and looking over. I know you're used to being on camera, but for me, I'm not so used to it. So I'm trying to like look at the camera like a normal person. Well, I have a giant star in my eye, so it's all I can see on the screen. So everybody will have to forgive me for that. So we'll just like look at the camera like we're crazy and it'll be fine. Bless you. I don't even see it at all. Great. Okay. I'm hiding it. Uh uh-uh, uh. I don't even see it. <laughs> Okay, so y'all know Landon has a great um, Instagram. He does reels. He does TikTok. It's TikTok. It's Landon Talks, and he goes on and explains Southern things to y'all. When people first started sending you to me, I already knew about you, but people were sending it to me when you explained double names because I have the double name, and you know, not to brag, but we have listeners that um, are all over, and we have like, um, you know, Canada. We've yeah. got, you know, France, we've got other countries. And so people don't understand. I will send out to people when I'm doing like, Hey, we're going to um, do this interview. I'm so excited. Remember, tell your client or whoever I'm talking to that um, it's Mary Payne. It's two names like Mary Ann, like Mary Jane, like Ellie Mae, like Billy Bob. I give a lot of examples. Oh yeah. What do you think they call me the entire time we talk? Mary, this is for sure, Mary. <laughs> And I'm like, I tr- and then people get mad. They're like, why'd they call you the wrong name? I'm like, y'all, I explained it. If they called it the wrong name, I'm not going to correct them because I've already explained it. There are people in my life that are, are like parents of my friend, of like my kids' friends, right? So they've, I've known them since kids were in kindergarten. They're 20 and 17 now. They still call me Mary. Mm-hmm. Like I've, I've known you for 15 years. I've explained my name and I can't explain it anymore. Oh, yeah. So if you call me Mary, you call me Mary. I'll answer. It's fine. I guess, I guess if you're not right here in Mississippi and very much in the South, you don't know how important the the two double names are. Every year I get a new set of four-year-olds. They get new four-year-olds at the school. I teach 4K through sixth grade art. And the new set of four-year-olds, the first like role reading is always like a lot of correcting. Like, no, I'm Mary Elizabeth. <laughs> Not yes. Mary. Yes. No, I'm Mary. Yes. Not yes. Mary Catherine. Like, <laughs> get it clear the first day. And then I make sure to always put both names. <laughs> All right, I will tell you that. Um, okay, look at your computer and not your and not your phone because I think you're using your phone as a camera. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So when you're looking over there, it's like um, uh, you're looking I see what over you're at. Okay, I'm looking at the phone now. At Do you know way. what is so funny? Is this, is this like, the right way to look? Yes. This is the right way. On Saturday Night Live, if you've ever noticed. Um, when the musical acts come on, sometimes they look to the side. It's because on Saturday Night Live, the musical stage, there's no audience in front of it. It's off okay. over here. So, sense. so many times on Saturday Night Live, they always look over to the sides because they're looking at the audience because there's no audience in front of them. So what I'm saying is you and I are just like um, Saturday Night Live. For sure. That's, that's what it is. We got very, this. very similar. <laughs> well, I was telling you before we came on because I was saying my dad is from Charleston, Mississippi. And you're like, where's that? And I was like, okay. And this is what we do in the South, y'all. I said, you go up I-55, mm-hmm. going towards Oxford. And then on the right, there's a park. It says George Pancoster State Park. And I said, that's my grandfather because I'm Mary Pancoster, now Mary Pancoster Gilbert. And you're like, got it. This is what we do. And if you and I talk for five more minutes, we're going to know 12 people in common. We are. <laughs> for sure. 
Have you done a reel or a TikTok about that, about how you just takes a few minutes and then even if like you don't even know where Charleston, Mississippi is, for sure we know 10 people in common. Oh, exactly. For sure. No, like that's hilarious. I got into distances a little bit. So like a bit down the road, you know how we're very vague about directions or like yeah. <laughs> saying you're uh-huh. going to turn, you're going to turn where that old barn used to be or where so right. so or, or where that one cow stands, you know? So <laughs> yes. those, those kind of directions are very familiar. It's not anything unusual. <laughs> well, that's, that is so funny. My parents live um, in Madison now, you know, outside of Jackson. We used to live right in Jackson. Now they live it's, in Madison. It's beautiful um, out there. They live on a, a lake. And my sister just recently like bought their house and redid it. My parents moved to the retirement community, you know, the whole thing. Is it like Carolina? When you're Lake Cavalier. Okay, close, close with Lake Carolina. Which is which is pretty close. Mm-hmm. And um, if you're going out there and you're going the back way, so instead of going off 55, whatever, you're going the back way, I literally don't know. It's some, I have no, I, it might be Livingston Road. I'm not sure, but I'll go, but you go the back way and then you go mm-hmm. to where you take a left at where that kind of broke down shed is. And that's yes. where you go left. <laughs> and I'm telling that to my husband and he, and he goes, can you give me the name of the street or do I have to look for, <laughs> what if, and I go, I don't know. I like just that. like. He's like, could I put it in ways? Like, I don't think it'll work. I was like, you just remember that shed? It's like broken down. You take a left. And then you go for a while. There's some new houses on the right. And then you go for a little bit and you come to that crossroads and then you go straight. He's like, these are not directions. If you get to the old cotton gin, you've gone too far. That's too far. You got to turn around <laughs> my in wife, their parking lot. They don't care. <laughs> my wife really said that to somebody the other day. She was, she was being serious. <laughs> So tell me about you. So where are you in the South? And then tell me about being an art teacher and all that, because I love it. So I am in Laurel, Mississippi. You may have heard of it Whoop. on Hometown, HGTV Home. Mm-hmm. It's in its hometown, place yes. To be. And it always has been. It has not always looked like it does right now. It did a long time ago, and then it kind of like fell into disrepair. Um, yeah. But as we were growing up, we always thought it was cute and like we thought it could be good and we would like walk around downtown and be like, this could be something. And now it is. So it's like just the craziest thing, like this whole revival. I love of it. Town. Um, and at the first season we were like, will it stick? And then here we are all well into it. And now it's its own thing. So it's a really yeah. cool, it's a really cool place to be. And I have worked at a public at the public in the public school system in the city schools in laurel city schools um at laurel magnet school of the arts it's a public magnet school so anybody can go there you just Mm -hmm. do the application um and it is one of the top schools in the state so it's been really i've learned a lot from being a teacher there i actually started teaching at this school so i only know this like elite level of like art integrated lessons that they do yeah um, and it's really special what they what they've got going on there. What, what we do there, they they teach academics using the arts. So there's me, a dance teacher, a PE teacher, and a music teacher, and um, everybody teaches whatever the kids learned that week in their classrooms on Fridays, like a lesson using using art, teaching that concept, and it does really well. And we've got some we've got some of the highest scores in the state, and the teachers there are just outstanding. So me and my wife both would drive to school with our fourth grader. He would go to school with us in one car in the cutest little place. It's really, really small town. Good goodness. (laughs) My friend, um, Tom Paulson was just on an episode of hometown. Um, he and his sisters were there to get a house because he's from Laurel and um, his two sisters, and they bought a house so they could come and visit their dad and have a place for yeah. them to come with their kids and everything. Do you yeah. remember that episode? No, I, ha- I don't remember that episode, but I'll have to look. I'll go look it up now. It will, I've watched most of them. It's hard for me to remember through them all. But yeah, and, and then I know. once we watch it, then we'll all go like figure out where that house is. <laughs> yeah, Tom's um, Tom's episode, it, I just know that it aired on Mother's Day. I only know that because I was out of town. I came home and was like, shoot, I forgot to record it. But um, I've seen it since. And then my friend Shelly Sumrall was also on that episode. She's an artist. And she was on that episode. They're from, do you know Shelly Sumrall? Uh, that's a Bolton. Very Shelly name. Sumrall Bolton. Well, yeah. Sumralls and Boltons are familiar last names. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She's an artist, and so she, Shelly and Marty uh, Sumrall were tried outs with me at Ole Miss, and then Tom was at Ole Miss with me. He lives up here now, and so I just, a lot of people live up here where I am in the D.C. area. It really is weird, and yeah. then people come visit, and so, um, but yeah, when I saw, finally, I was like, finally, somebody I know is on Hometown. Like, finally, yeah. I knew, I knew if I watched it long enough. 
you, you know? would definitely get there for sure. And my wife was even in this season. She was one of the artists on one of the episodes for a man. She painted like six portraits for um, his family. They, he was buying a house in Laurel so they could all come like live here, not come visit here all together. And he had a, um, a his sweet little son with them. She painted portraits for them. So it, the show is really great. And they, they feature artists from here all the time. And, and that's what's really cool about it is that they've uplifted like so many people from the area as well as yeah. the area itself. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's cool. That's we cool. could put well, you together who we know that. through who what and who knows what. So all day, <laughs> all day we could figure it out, and we would be like at a reunion by the end of the day. <laughs> it's probably not that interesting to other people. So let's. Um, it's interesting to Mississippi people for sure. Right, because we, we're noisy, um, and I want to know who your people are. You know, who are your people? That is the first thing you ask. I used to work at this little store in Old Town Alexandria here, and it's a little, you know, like smocks clothing you know real southern little children's clothes it's still there monday's child shout out and yes. um people would come in and to shop and if they had a southern accent immediately i would go where are you from and mm-hmm. they would say mississippi alabama and we would have all this conversation and then within like five six minutes even if they went to alabama or something we would we would do a couple of minutes and then we knew people oh definitely. yeah and your, the lady that owned the store <laughs> your mama and them and i'd be like and you went to, okay, so you went to Alabama and, and you were a, a Theta. And so do you know, you know, um, so the lady that owned the store was from New Jersey. And she was like, I, every time, every time she's like, I cannot believe this. Every time you find a way. Mm-hmm. And I, I haven't lived, I've lived here longer than I lived in Mississippi, but I'm like, no, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Oh yeah, for sure. I'm going to figure it out. Like I will find a way. And if I don't in this conversation, I'm going to call the person that can figure it out. <laughs> Yes. No. <laughs> Text my sisters immediately. Okay. So tell me about your social media and how did you come up with this idea to do Land and Talks, which is explaining Southernisms to non-Southerners? Well, it is the strangest thing and it's just evolved from a lot of different ways and it's turned into something that I never meant for it to. And it's, I, my goals have changed through, throughout the process even. Um, so yeah. basically, my wife was Miss University of Miss Southern Miss uh, Miss University of Southern Ooh, Mississippi. So she's wow. always been like the stage person, and she's I think she's very beautiful, mm-hmm. obviously. So I like to take pictures. My hair's in my face. Sorry, I'd like to get pictures of her and like video <laughs> video what she's doing. And um, a few years ago, she so she teaches. She's a sped inclusion teacher at our school, so she has like long days, you know. Um, but good yeah. days. She does really good work. Um, and one of her students had asked her. One of the parents had asked her to come read. Uh, to one of her students as Belle, the Disney princess. She was Belle and Beauty and the Beast at our local theater. So that's the thing. Okay. Yeah. So she had the costume. So we were sitting here on a Friday in our living room and she w- was dressed to go. But, and she like, it was the first pause of the day. And I watched her pause and like sigh and realized what she was about to go do <laughs> and be tired. And I filmed that. And it was like the seven second clip. Um, And it went really viral. It was one of the first ones that I ever took. And it went really viral. So I was like, hmm. I like this. So I've just documented some things every now and then on and off throughout the past few years. But then in um, earlier this year, I started finally, like, instead of looking for trends and instead of like little catchy moments, I just started talking because I love to talk to people. It's like my favorite thing to do. I love to talk. I love to find out about your people and them. Um, And I finally just started talking. I started sharing things about my life and it, I shared the story of Walmart high school with, um, the audience and it just blew up and it was the first time what, wait 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 what is walmart high school <laughs> i wondered if we would have to pause on that okay so walmart high school, <laughs> that you can't like blood brush over that right so walmart uh, you can't you can't just go past it yeah <laughs> well it's a very southern story even so i was camping in the woods in eighth grade on the friday of spring break me and my friends we were in the woods um we had the whole week of spring break right it's friday so we go back to school the okay. next monday but a tornado came and hit our school. I didn't even know that. Then that's that's so indicative of, t- of tornadoes. I feel like people are so don't understand tornadoes at all. Like if it's not hitting you, it's not hitting you. It's, it's, <laughs> so you we just were, keep moving. I mean, we were fine yeah, in the words. Nobody, nobody was like upset about it. Um, <laughs> totally. <laughs> so obviously, we all went like to see the school. But so we still had to finish the school year. Well, the town had just got a new super Walmart, <laughs> and it was a big deal. But the old Walmart building was empty. It's next to the Kroger in, in one building. So okay. they took that old Walmart building and sectioned it off with plywood, cubicles, no ceilings, straight up to the roof. All the signage was still there, like the baby signage and all the section signage was hanging. Everything was Walmart. 
Um, and they sent us to school in that for the rest of the school year, seventh through 12th grade um, in one room, basically. And so for like three days, we pretended we were going to do school. And then it just kind of devolved from there into total chaos. But it was so much fun. And, and like our principal wore a Walmart vest to greet us. The principals were wearing the Walmart vest. <laughs> yes. And the intercom was the intercom. I had the, uh-uh. cafe- the, ca- mm-hmm. the cafeteria was in the garden center, like the garden. <laughs> and like choir and chorus was in layaway. Art was <laughs> where the jelly was. <laughs> That's for real. That's like for real. That's how it is. <laughs> so is great. we got like pardoned from the state test for that year. Like the governor was like, let's just reset <laughs> next year. That so, is so funny. That is mm-hmm. so funny. So that was a fun story. And then people were like, wait, you're from Laurel. Wait, you're from the South. And I honestly didn't know that would be something that people are interested in. You always hear like, find your niche, do your niche. And I didn't even realize Yeah. That- it like was niche because I didn't I didn't realize people didn't say it. I honestly didn't I mean I knew we had southernisms I know we have I mean I don't I don't have an accent but <laughs> me either <laughs> no me not either. at all not at no. all uh-uh. um, but I've heard people say that you know but I just didn't think about it as much and the moment I started sharing the town and like things about it and then the south it just blew up and it connected with so many different kinds of people like not just people from where I live, which is all that I would think would care about it. But people from, like you said, Canada, people listen to you from Canada, from Canada, from across the world, really, I've noticed that if you're from a place that is hot and poor, like at any point in its past, (laughs) you probably relate to a lot of the same things that we're talking about here, like our superstitions and the things we say. Totally. They're very relative. I've seen like a lot of that as people have commented from literally around the world. Um, And so it's turned into this and it's just so strange because I have never considered myself like super Southern dude. I mean, I know I'm very from the South, but I'm not like the most mass. I didn't, wasn't playing football in high school. You know, like I, I lo- love the theater, all that kind of a stuff. So I've never considered myself as representational of like people from the South. Cause that's not what you see, you know, all the while I literally like live in, was born and live here, you know, <laughs> like I, I am right, right. a Southern man. Um, So it's helped yeah. me to, sort of I distanced myself from seeing things that are southern sort of not not literally I like live here so you can't too much but I tried to right, be this different thing and I've always tried to like lower my voice and seem different um so for this to happen it's not only like I think it's like opening people's eyes to like what the south is like but it's also changed mine like all these things are things I've watched my whole life and I haven't always appreciated and I've always at even like I've been like Ugh, about some of the things you know um, yeah and right. there's problematic stuff here obviously you know and obviously, it's very yeah. easy to focus on that it's very easy to be mad about that kind of a thing and this has helped me and I think a lot of other people like celebrate this like I'm trying to focus on the good things from here and I think it's people are relating to it and and it's given people a place to be seen at there's two sides of every situation in the South, right? There's like, I live in a yeah. red state and a blue city. So it's like that whole thing. But I feel like I, our commonalities are helping each, both of those groups be in my comments and be yeah. kind to each other and like, just be seen for the first time. Cause we're like at the table together for the first time for not the first yeah, time. I love that. You know, the last few no, years have been a little bit contemptuous and I feel like this is a people want a breather. Hey guys, you know, I've already talked to you a lot about this microdose.com. This is um, a really great product. There are these gummies that you get and you can eat one or two, or I've been um, taking a bite out of a half of one before bed. It helps my mind get off that just think, 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 think where I cannot go to sleep. I've tried everything, you guys. I try all the sleep tips and nothing helps me. I read my book, nothing works, but taking this like half of a microdose gummy has helped me so much. I know Ingrid takes one or two. It just depends. And it comes with these instructions that'll tell you start here. And if you didn't know, like I'm using it for sleep, but microdosing can also be used for a creative boost for kind of an enjoying the moment, living in the moment type of feeling for sleep, which is what I'm using it for pain. If you've got chronic pain, it will help you kind of ease your mind on that as well as anxiety, which a lot of these people on these shows we watch, they have, you know, major anxiety all the time and they could take a half a gummy for sure. It's also good for workout and recovery, which I didn't know that's new information. And also it's good to help you get relaxed for 
sex. There, I said it. I'm sorry. It helps you get in the zone easier no matter what you're using it for. And Microdose is available nationwide. So if you want to learn more about microdosing THC, you go to microdose.com and use code PINKSHADE. You'll get free shipping and 30% off your first order. 30% is a lot. So the links can be found in the show notes like always. But again, you can go to microdose.com and use code Pink Shade to get 30% off and free shipping. And then let me know how you liked it. Breathe some life into your own backyard with fastgrowingtrees.com this spring. From shade to fresh fruit to privacy and natural beauty, let fastgrowingtrees.com help you plant your dream garden with their expert advice and fast, reliable shipping. You guys, I ordered two trees from Fast Growing Trees. And first of all, they're not super expensive. And then you use our code and it makes it even less expensive. But I didn't know what I'm doing. I have no idea about growing anything. So you go in and you take this little quiz, right? So I type in my zip code. All right, that puts me in a certain growing zone. I think I was growing zone seven. Then you click on, do you have direct sun? Do you have partial sun? In my front yard, it is like the seventh circle of hell complete hot, hot sun. So I chose that. Then I said I was looking for trees and I wanted them to be about four feet tall when they arrived. Well, that narrowed it down. So I ended up choosing two crepe myrtles. They're called Calorama Scarlet Crepe Myrtles. And that just means the color on them is so pretty. It's like a burgundy red. Oh, they're going to be gorgeous. And I put them on each side of the little gateway from the fence into the front yard to the backyard. And they look great. I was out there watering them earlier today because when the box comes, it gives you very specific, easy instructions. Even I with the brown thumb could do it and they look great. And I'm very excited. Um, and I'm watering, even though my daughter told me it was going to rain and I was dumb. I did it anyway. So I am loving fast going trees and I'm going to be ordering some more as soon as I figure out what else I need. Cause I think I need some flowers in my flower bed. So over 1.5 million happy fast growing trees customers are out there. That's a lot. So if you go to fastgrowingtrees.com slash pink shade, you'll get 15% off your entire order. So you're going to get 15% off by going to fastgrowingtrees.com slash pink shade. Do it and let me know what you picked. Yeah, I think you're right. And I think doing it with humor and to show that, like you said, you're there are a lot of problems with the South, right? There, there are, you can't say they're not, but it is home and it's, it's, you know, where I'm from and I love, and, you know, if I had an opportunity to move to Mississippi next week, you know, I would. Now, would my kids be happy about it? No, <laughs> but uh, I would, and my husband would, he's from Oklahoma and, you know, he, he gets it too. And I don't know, I, there's just something about, the South. And it's so interesting that you said that about the heat because yeah. you see that all the time. It's like, what is it about the heat? It's like, what do you do in the heat besides like um, talk about people or drink? I think that um, Larison Campbell <laughs> said that on her podcast, Devil in the Ditch. I think she said that's something that sort of, it, she lives in New York City, but you know, she goes down to um, Greenville a lot. And she's like, it's something about that heat. It just, it just it is. You. Well, you don't understand it if you haven't been in it, you know? It's the truth. It really does. It is, it is something and it dictates what you can and can't do throughout the day. Like we're not doing all that stuff in the middle of the daytime. That's not, it's time Too to be hot. still. And I guess if you're being still, you're either asleep or you're talking about somebody and fanning yeah. yourself on the yeah. porch, you know? So it does. It, it, I mean, it really has an impact. The heat here is something else. And it really, really turned up this week. It's like, not joking. Oh gosh. It's, it's so funny. And I talked to my mom, I'm like, you know, Hey mom, how are y'all? And I'm asking. And the first thing is, well, it's a little hot this week. Or a couple of days ago, she's like, I'm just in the middle of a conversation with my mother. And she goes, Hey, I have to go because I think it's a tornado or something coming through my, my um, umbrella is about to blow off the porch. And I go, okay, my mom's 82. I'm like, mom, she goes, okay, I'll call you back. And I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. Later she texts me. She goes, it's, it's fine. I just had to pull it down. I was scared it's going to blow off. I was like, oh my goodness, mom. She and that's like, another thing about the South is 82 year old fearless women who don't, don't pretend. Well, they're very morbid. They do love to say things about having one foot in the grave and stuff. Um, but yeah, yeah, they yeah. can do whatever they, you know, like my grandma could run laps all around me. So who is it? I think it might be Matt of uh, Matt and Jake, my friends that have the podcast reality gaze and Matt is um, from Oklahoma. And I think it's Matt that talks about 
whenever he calls his mom and they're just chatting. Hey, you know, so-and-so, how's it going? And then they'll tee you up with some questions. Like, do you remember um, Susan that was in your high school? Okay, she was in a different grade, but then she married so-and-so and their children. And you go, oh, yeah, I remember her. Like, she died. Mm-hmm. Wait, what? Well, like, you teed me up with all those questions. And then you're like, um, oh, her sister was in a terrible car accident. I'm like, mm-hmm. what? Gosh. It's always like you you tee it up, you tee it up, and then they tell you something terrible. And you really didn't know who they were talking about anyways, and it was a reach. And then they're like, well, she's dead. And you're like, my Lord. (laughs) What a roller coaster. (laughs) It finally brought me somebody, brought somebody back. And now (laughs) Now I know who they are and now they died. And that's for real. That's really a real thing. That's a lot of the conversations. And a lot of times they'll be like, (laughs) they'll be like, I told them you'd be at the visitation. And you're like, (laughs) No, I wasn't. don't know them. I wasn't going to the visitation. Know. I don't know who that is, but okay. Uh, I'll tell you something. My friend Mary Preston, who's like Mary Payne, my friend Mary Preston, um, is one of my best friends. And she, whenever I come to town, and I'm not talking bad about her, she knows this. She knows this about herself. I'll say, so she and I'll have lunch plans. I haven't seen her in a year. Like we just text. I haven't seen her in a year. Hey, I'm coming in town. I've, and I'm only in town for a certain amount of time. I've got so many family commitments, but... Yeah. Thursday, we're having lunch. Goes, Thursday, we're having lunch. Great. I'm going to meet you at 12 at wherever. Great. And then if I don't tell her specifically, she'll show up with some random people. She'll be like, well, I saw so-and-so and I just told him to come on. I'm like, I don't even know them, Mary Preston. I wanted to visit with you. Yes, they'll she's show like, up. Mm-hmm. She goes, well, I saw her at the grocery store and I just said, I'm having lunch with Mary Payne. Do you want to come? And they said, yes. I go, I hadn't talked to that person in 12 years. I don't even know them. And I'll have to tell her now. It's I'm real specific. I go, Mary Preston, we are having a, a drink and dinner. She goes, okay. I go, don't invite anybody else. She's like, <laughs> okay. That's so rude. I go, it's not rude. Nobody knows we're having a drink and dinner. You, it's not rude to not invite people that aren't invited. And she's like, okay. But she's so funny. She goes, I did what you said. I didn't invite anybody else. I'm like, okay. Thank that's, you. Why did, that, why did people do that? That's hilarious and very something. Because we're just chatting along the way. And they're like, well, what are you getting into? And you're like, well, I'm fixing to go have dinner with Mary Payne. And they're like, and you see it on their face. And you're like, well, come on with us. You know, it just happens that way. It's part of the yeah, lifestyle. <laughs> and if they aren't physically there, they're going to talk about them, even if you don't know who they are. I, lo- I love to hear everybody talking and being like, well, you know, so, you know, such and such. And you're like, no, you don't. And then they keep describing them. And you're, you finally just have to kind of, agree you know (laughs) you're like yeah Yeah. (laughs) just to keep the conversation moving (laughs) what is it about the south and the stories because i live up here in northern virginia which is technically the south but let me let's be honest it's not and i don't i just went on a vacation with my mom and my sisters we tried to go every year on a girl's trip we were just at the beach and my sister was telling me the craziest story Mm -hmm. about somebody at something that like hit somebody at the country club and kept going and everybody in the country club was talking about that lady and then my sister tells me like six more stories about that same lady and I go I've never heard anything like this I go this is the craziest story I have ever heard and it spun off into three more stories and I said what is it what is it I don't have any stories like that about anybody I know up here I don't have any divorces where somebody started screwing around with somebody's best friend and those two got together and then they got divorced and now the kids have to be um step siblings and they didn't even know each other and I was like I don't what is it I go it's because of the heat everybody's so hot they got to do these crazy things I was like I, I was like I have a couple of friends up here that are divorced or remarried or whatever but I don't have any of the stories that y'all have down there I mean I wish I did it'd give me more to talk about Oh yeah. Well, and, and that is a whole thing. It's, it's a for real thing. It, it comes down to the ideas of community back to the heat again, like we're on this whole thing, but everybody's in everybody's business because when everybody got in everybody's business the first time, a long time ago, building the communities, it was for mm-hmm. like, not survival, but for those reasons, it was like to make sure everybody was taken care of. So the gossip yeah. is more of like a life life alert chain kind of you know in the same way it's not excusing it obviously but like that's what it is and then the storytelling like the we have such a rich history of like the arts here and people don't realize it I think because they don't understand what folk art is as much but like we are just steeped in folk art and in culture here like that's what we have and so our traditions are around storytelling they're around like talking about your ancestors talking about your history 
Um, and yeah. I think it all just collides into this one big mishmash of these, mo- <laughs> now we're modern Southern people and we, all we want to do is talk about everybody and sit on the porch. <laughs> I love, there was a, um, a reel that you just did recently and it was about gossip. And so there's a great podcast. If you haven't heard it called normal gossip and it's just, she tells stories and that then she has a guest on, they react. It's a great pot. It's not Southern at all. It's just called normal gossip. It's just like a normal story from your office or something that happened at somebody's wedding and people write in and then she retells it. It's great. Uh, you would be great on that podcast. Yeah, that's I would be I'm great on that podcast too. Yeah. I'd yeah. love it. And is she, um, now that made me forget. Oh, you were telling it, you were doing a reel and you're like, when you're gossiping about somebody, it is important to say, I have to repeat it because it's heavy on my heart. Mm-hmm. It's important. And that's important. It. Mm-hmm. It, you have to say it. So you're not just talking bad about somebody. You really want right. somebody to know because perhaps they need to be on a prayer chain. Exactly. And there's a fine line between being the town gossip and being informative. You got to ride that line. And it's, it has a lot to do with language. Preface, prefacing things is really important. Like if you just came out and said, I don't know, did you see? I, I saw Allison at the Dollar General with not a stitch of makeup on, you know? Right, right. Now we're being ugly. How ugly of you? But if yeah. you said, if you said, now, it's just been weighing heavy on my heart lately. I've been think, been praying and trying to lift up Allison. You know, I saw her in the Dollar General the other day just looking peaked as she could be. Now we've turned it into a concern that we need to share right. with everybody. You see the difference? And then you can you yeah. can give more details after that. <laughs> but yeah, as long you as you she didn't have it, any makeup. Right. Not, in, not right. a stitch of makeup on her face. Didn't have her face on at all. And then at the end of your information, you can say it. You could say something like, so we're just going to keep praying for her. I'm keeping her, keeping her on my heart. And that ties it up nicely to make sure that they leave the conversation knowing that you are a good person as well. Right. But, <laughs> but you did see her with no makeup on and that was not a good thing. And yeah. now we've communicated that. Everybody knows you've done your societal duty on um, and <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> taking care of it from both I- sides. When I'm in Mississippi and I have to, you know, my parents live out at the lake and, you know, what they did now I stay at my sister's at the lake. But if you have to run out, you can't just run out anywhere when you're at, when you're not in town. So when you got to go to the grocery store or whatever, you got to go to the Kroger, I will, before I leave, you do a quick eyelash curl, mm-hmm. one swipe and just a little gloss because what if I see somebody? Well, and you're going now, to. And I'm going to, but here... Uh, I could literally be in my pajama bottoms, throwing a t-shirt, hair in a ponytail, not even putting any earrings in, and go right to the grocery store, get what I need, and I might see somebody, and I don't care. Totally yeah, isn't that wild? a different vibe. Mm-hmm. Uh, anytime I've been to a big city, like the first time I was in New York City, like as, an, as a young adult, I was like so anonymous, and I just couldn't believe it. Like I couldn't believe how free that felt. <laughs> I was like, I could just <laughs> yes. be purple and walk down the street and nobody would blink. And I, and I, I couldn't no. believe how like dip, that is really a different feeling than what it is to be here. Because yeah. you're going you're gonna to be seen. And even if you aren't seen by somebody, the cashier knows you. Uh, for sure. And they're going to be like, they're going to, they're going to tell the next person coming in that they saw you with not a stitch of makeup on and exactly Mm -hmm. look like she just come from an exercise class, but she hadn't basically wearing a duster or a muumuu, you know, (laughs) (laughs) I could wear a muumuu to the grocery store right now. And people be like, well, where'd you get that fabulous muumuu? Um, okay. So Southern questions. All right. I have a game here, not, not an ad, not a sponsor. It's a game called Bless Your Heart by Garden and Gun. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I just pulled out, literally pulled some out random. There's a whole, I mean, the, there's zillions of cards here, but I just pulled some out last night. Okay. So this is a question that I'm going to ask you a few that I know you're going to know the answer to, but then I'm going to ask you some that maybe you don't. So here's a question from Garden and Gun, Bless Your Heart. Every July, visitors gather near Philadelphia, Mississippi for what festival? Oh, we're going straight forward with it? Oh, Lord, there could be so many festivals. And I'm near Philadelphia, so I should know it. There's watermelon festivals. There's catfish festivals. There's blueberry festivals. There's a lot of... All right, let me, give you an- let, me give you another, let me give you another hint. It includes horse races, tree stumping, politicians, and fried everything. The politicians is what should give you the hint. Is it Neshoba County Fair? Neshoba County Fair. Neshoba County Fair. Mm-hmm. Neshoba County Fair is an important milestone for everybody. you got to go to the fair at least one time. Yeah, I've been once, and I was like, I don't get it. Um, 
Walter Anderson, the artist, the Mississippi artist Walter Anderson was drawn to a Mississippi island where he painted watercolors and kept logbooks. Do you know what island? It was Horn Island or Cat Island, one of those. It's Horn Island. Horn Island. Mm-hmm. And I've been to Horn Island. My father-in-law dropped us off one time. On You can, you can take a boat out there. Yeah. In the or did he come back? I mean, he came back and got you. He, he actually, it was really cute. We thought he was like, we thought we were big and adults and he was going to let us be big and drop us off on the island for the day. And he just went over like, and thought he was out of sight. And we watched him the whole day, like <laughs> watching us from afar. So <laughs> we weren't really abandoned, but <laughs> it was still fun. We got the vibe. Let me tell you a funny story that's like that. So we were just talking to my friends last night. There's this lady that does Instagram or TikTok, and she does about Gen Xers of, um, which I am a Gen Xer. And it was all, it was like, Generation X, are you okay? And she's always like, let me tell you why we're okay. You know, we, uh, <laughs> we, yeah, we, yeah. we get, <laughs> we'd be getting in trouble if we came inside before the streetlights came on. And, you know, we went outside and we, we didn't have Google. You know, we were Google. She's very funny. I can't think of her name. But I was sent that to some friends of mine. And one of the things that she said was, how many times did your parents leave you somewhere, forgot about you completely, and it was not considered child abuse? Well, <laughs> yeah. This story is famous in our family, and my mother just is just so like, I don't know what the problem is. You're fine, right? <laughs> my sister Sounds came bad. home. My, my middle sister is an artist, and she had been downtown painting a mural for something for the high school or something like on a downtown brick wall. So she came home covered in paint, and you can relate as an artist, covered in paint. And my mom's like, oh, we don't have any turpentine or anything. She put the turpentine right on the skin back then. You didn't oh, yeah. try to get it off any, anyway. So she said, well, we got to go to the hardware store. So we all jumped in the car. I'm sure completely barefoot, I'm sure. Go down to the hardware store, uh, the Ace Hardware next to the Sunflower and uh, next to the Rexall Drugs. And I, um, and this is right in Jackson. Yes. And so I jumped out, went in. And then I'm walking around the hardware store, you know, whatever. And that was my thrill for the afternoon, right? Yeah. And I went up to the counter and was like, has anybody seen my mother? And they're like, oh, she left. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay. And they're, I was like, can you call her? And they're like, she doesn't have an account because, you know, you have an account at all mm-hmm. the stores. Like, she didn't have an account. She paid. And I was like, shoot. So I walked over to the drugstore. Went to the back to the pharmacist. And I was like, can y'all call my mom? She left me at the hardware store. And they're like, okay. So they called my mom. A few minutes later, my mom picks me up. And here I was, you know, barefoot on the sidewalk. She picks me up, get in the car. And I'm like, mom, you left me at the hardware store. They didn't even have your number. Like I had to go to the <laughs> drugstore. I was probably like eight. She's like, oh, you're fine. Whatever. When I tell this story, I'm like, I was so scared and I was so glad because what if the drugstore was closed? Hardware store didn't know my phone number, 9561754. They didn't know it. Nice. And I'm telling the story and mom, to this day, my mom's like, you were fine. They called. And mom's like, here's the problem. Back then you would just jump in the car. And so we didn't know you were in the car. I was like, this story's getting worse. You didn't even know <laughs> That's not was better, in the car. <laughs> that doesn't make She's it better. Like, She's like, I don't know. Your sister had to go somewhere and you just jumped in the car. Mm-hmm. I'm like, gosh, mom. I think but that's, that's just hilarious. how it was. That's just how it was. Well, and I got a, t- a glimpse of that because where I live in, in where I live, I grew up staying with my great grandma all, all every day. Like yeah. I would go stay with my great grandma until I went to school, um, me and my cousin. Yeah. And, and it was, see you at dinner, you know, <laughs> like go yeah, outside. See you at dinner. So yeah. it was like, yeah water hoses and blueberries and all those things so we I have a strange taste of like all these generations of that kind of a thing by being so close to the older generation in my family and growing up like that yeah. so it's really fascinating because mm-hmm. that is very much the case and I can t- tell you that it will never have been your mom's fault that's not ever ever going to be a thing she's doing <laughs> she's not about ex- to this day I'm like mom don't you think that was bad that you left me at the hardware she goes mm-hmm. no it's, it's either she not bad or not relevant. One of the two. Not something we should She also doesn't think it was bad that her favorite t- her favorite afternoon cigarette was the afternoon cigarette when she was like breastfeeding. Nice. She's like, that was so relaxing. So relaxing. That's I'm really like, Mom. <laughs> She's like, Hilarious. we didn't know it was bad. We didn't know it was bad. I was like, what? really? And, he- and here we all are. Moms can and really get we you. Are. They really can. And we're fine. And we're mm-hmm. fine. Um, okay, let's see. We're not going to do that. Oh, th- I will ask you about this because I will see, cause since you're um, an artiste, maybe you'll have an opinion on this book. Although the author never saw it published, this New Orleans set novel was awarded the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction after the author's death. Do you want choices or do you know give the me answer? Choice. Give me some choices. I don't know the answer. Okay, The Moviegoer, Cold Mountain, 
Streetcar Named Desire, Confederacy of Dunces. Streetcar Named Desire. No, it's no. Confederacy of Dunces. Oh, uh, okay. So this is did you read that? Stuff. It's no. a, it's just, this is did you read Confederacy of Dunces? No, but my wife was in a streetcar named Desire. Um, so that's what I thought immediately. New Orleans streetcar. Yeah. Put it together. No. Terrible. Okay, Confederacy of Dunces. Not fun to watch that play. <laughs> streetcar. Well, yeah. Confederacy of Dunces was a very I mean Pulitzer Prize winning book, and the author did I believe kill himself because of course it's a Southern writer. Yeah. He killed himself before the book came out. Um, yeah. I hated that book, and it pains me because I was an English major at Ole Miss, steep Oxford, Mississippi history of literature, and I wanted to love it, and I hated that book. Yeah, hate it. Hate I'm gonna it. have so to look I was that one up. You were going to join my hate. Well, I hate when I don't know something because I have a degree in history, so I feel like I should know lots of things, not, not as much literature, but I do like to know that kind of stuff. Do you know, um, you are going to know this, in Mississippi, a man named Lee and his wife, Pup, threw clay, fired it with cobalt blue, jade, and nutmeg brown, added a wavy black line to represent the Mississippi River. These pieces displayed in the Smithsonian are called, do you need choices? Give me some choices. I just see them in my head. Okay. Face jug pottery, jug band pottery, mad pottery, McCarty pottery. McCarty pottery. It's McCarty. Did you know that the the line in McCarty pottery meant the Mississippi River? I didn't know that. That's what that's the only thing that threw me about it because I didn't know that about it. But they, I mean, like McCarty pottery is just prolific here. It's like the thing to have and to get, especially when you're getting I mean, married, you would want some McCarty pottery. And you choose. Are you getting the blue? Because mm-hmm. I've got the blue and I've got the brown. I like the blue, but the brown is a vibe as well for certain things. It depends. Yeah, yeah. I think I have a few things of green. Just people give it to you. They do. And um, I'm always like, and you have like the birds or you have like, I have like a olive holder. I don't eat the olives. The birds. The birds are um, pretty serious. We're not going to ask this dumb question. What state is the setting for The Sound and the Fury? Duh. Y'all, that's my... um. Favorite book of William Faulkner, in case anybody cares. Um, Okay, now we'll do this one because this does um, get hits close to home because where this is, U.S. 61 and U.S. 49 in -hmm. Clarksdale, Mississippi, is very close to where my dad is from in Charleston, like really right there. Okay, yeah. In my Mississippi history class, the um, professor, Judge Ball, for those of you who went to Ole Miss, Judge Ball called me out in the Mississippi history class and said, oh, we have a coster in this class, so you will know the answer to this question. And I was like, I'm from Jackson. I, I, I'm from the big city. I don't know the answer, <laughs> but it is. Legend has it, this blues guitar sold his soul to the devil in 1964 at the crossroads of 61 and 49 in Clarksdale. Wasn't it Robert Johnson? Robert Johnson. Robert okay. Johnson, mm-hmm. Um. So I'm not going to bore y'all with any more of those. It's things like that. It's like, there's so much culture here. There's so much like just regular people that can do incredible things. It's really something. We had a blues band. We had B.B. King's blues band play at our wedding. Not B.B. King himself, but the band. And it was fun. Really? Mm-hmm. It was real fun. Wow. That's cool. All right. So I'm pulling up these things that I sent to my family because when you do your Southern phrases, there is one that you haven't put on, which is one that my dad says. Okay. I'll add it to my which, list. Um, my dad says you're under the doctor. Under the doctor, sick. I like that. I like that. that. Under the doctor, that's pretty. We're combining some things and getting it all the way. Yeah, that's I, pretty I, cool. I know. I, I'm like, I don't get it. And Dad's like, because you're under the doctor. I'm like, could be sexual, but I guess he just means you're under the doctor's care. But you just put under the doctor. Um, and then Are another you just thing, I said, like under the weather, got to go to under the weather, under the care of the doctor, and just smashed it all together. You know. Right. And then I had one where I said, my dad said all the time, I'm looking to see, um, yeah, because I wrote this thing and I got, it was 11 o'clock at night when I sent this to all these people in my family. They're in Sinatobia, they're in Charleston, they're in Memphis, they're in Jack, they're all over. And, um, decab, my Betty from decab is mm-hmm. my cousin's <laughs> wife. And, this one, what I'm trying to find my original. Did you see how long taken to the bed? Did you ever do that when we take I to the bed? I love to take to the bed. I love to have to threaten take to take to the, to the bed. I think it's one of the best threats you can have. So the um, this is how long this has taken. Okay, more than one. Okay, root inspector. Okay, my dad will say, I'll say, Dad, what about um, what about your friend, like uh, Mr. Barnes? I'll go, Mary Payne. You know he's a root inspector. Mm-hmm. That means he's dead. Mm-hmm. Did you know that one? Inspecting roots, root inspector. Mm-hmm. 
he's dead. I was like, because I said he's a he's a worm inspector. My dad said, if you're going to say it, say it right. He's a root inspector. I've heard root um, inspector, yes. Okay, so that was what I started when I said um, under the doctor, and I was telling them that I was going to be talking to you. Now, one that I don't know if you've heard, maybe it's just in our family with a lot of drinkers in my family that say the drunk front has come through. The drunk front. I haven't heard it, but uh, that, I like that. Combined like the, the store front. Like you, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, it's because I will say, so every year there is a family reunion at the George Pancaster State Park of my dad's side of the family. And we will always text if I'm not there, which usually I'm not because if my kids are usually still in school, I'll text the family and go, has the drunk front come through? <laughs> yep. The drunk front came through around eight o'clock. You Very know, good. <laughs> it's been on the, they've been on the pontoon boat all day and they started drinking. Yes. Around eight o'clock, the drunk front came through. Okay. I like that. I like that. And it's good that it's personal. Your family needs to make up their own every now and then. It's like, that's good. Well, I, it's, it's funny because some of these, I was like, doesn't everybody say that? Mm-hmm. Um, Caddy Wampus. Have you ever talked about Caddy Wampus? I did talk about Caddy Wampus because um, Caddy Wampus is askew, slightly askew, right? And Caddy Cornered right. is a diagonal, right? You've got Caddy Wampus. And, but you've got it's Caddy little... Cornered as Caddy Cornered as well. I did. I talked about Caddy Wampus, and actually, Leanne Rhymes shared a video of her like watching the Caddy Wampus video. It was the craziest thing. Like I was just like, no mm. way. Yes, yeah, she like shared it on her stories, and it was like her laughing at that video. It was the crazy. It was just so wild. So that that is the wildest thing. Seeing celebrities like share my stuff. It's just, I don't. I, don't know I, if I cannot admit to that. <laughs> I don't know if you will either, because because you think at some point you would run out of phrases, but literally at eleven o'clock last night, thirty members of my family, and it's still going this morning. Oh yeah, it's still going this morning. Um, but a lot of them, I think, are just things that people say. Um, you know, ch- run around with the chicken with your head cut off. Definitely. But I mean, that literally is something you would see growing up if you ever went out to your uh, country cousins. They would cut the head off a chicken. It would run around, and then you would get, or wring its neck. Mm-hmm. These are things that we saw mm-hmm. growing up, y'all. Right. And you describe, and we like describe the world through those, that lens of like what we saw and what we know. And then these are the things that we know. <laughs> right. And like pitching a hissy fit is on this list. I was pitch like, everybody says pitch a hissy fit. You can don't, don't everybody say fit. that? Mm-hmm. You can pitch a hissy fit. And I, I, that's what I'm saying. Doesn't everybody say that? Like, I think the first time I, I think in the Walmart video, I said fix into, and people kept, yeah. were like fix into. And I was like. Right. Fix into. I'm fixing up the store, but I. How else would you say fix and you're fixing it? You know, like I could not comprehend it. Like broke my brain for like a solid hour or two where I was like, how did, would they say that? And they that would was really say, what got me realizing, okay, we've got some things to discuss. I didn't even realize we've got some disgusting things because there's so many phrases like that. You're very right. Fixing to, I guess I just use all the time, like, um, listen, I'm fixing to go to the store and then I'm going to mm-hmm. go to the dry cleaner and then I'll be home and I'm going to make um, dinner. Or even and you're then, fixing to fix supper. Just, fix to fix supper. Yeah. Okay. Um, what about, and then I think you said this one the other day about being ugly. Like you don't want to be ugly. And so no, somebody no. that wasn't from the South may think you're talking about like physically ugly, but what you mean is you're, you're talking, you're being mean. You're being, mm-hmm. don't you're being stop mean. being so you're ugly. Saying, uh, being ugly. Don't be, we can't, we're not going to be ugly. I say that all the time in my classroom. That's how we tell kids to calm down and don't be ugly. Being ugly could be like you directly being mean, but you could be like cutting up at your grandparents' house when you shouldn't be like running around. We're not supposed to be being ugly. It's just general misbehavior, you know? Yeah, right. And I, and I think I probably didn't realize and until I saw you say it that people all over the world don't say I know being ugly. I know that was shocking too. I've seen so many stories of people that have said that and their spouses from not the south have been very confused about it and been like, "Why are you talking about their appearance?" But it's not it's not appearance. <laughs> No, I can not I can just Definitely remember my grandmother getting in my face now, like, you're being ugly. Mm-hmm. You stop being ugly to your sister or y'all aren't going to get to come back inside. You could um, be being ugly. You could be being tukey. A lot, lots of things you could be being. I think being ugly and being tukey are definitely different because being ugly, I think, is kind of being directly like mean to your sister. But yes. being tukey is just like you're being a little particular. Like you're being a little particular, picky. Mm-hmm, a little picky, difficult. I agree. There's lots of ways to descri- express all these things. <laughs> And what do you think about the phrase, um, having on an outfit or having on a get up? Like she a, had on a get up. Is that up. a phrase? People don't say, people don't say a get up. I don't think so. Cause I <gasps> say that a lot on the podcast. I'll say now, and I'm describing a reality show and I go, now she showed up in a real get up. 
Well, that's a good not up. an outfit. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. She had a real get up on. I know. Wow, well, I'd love to learn. I, that makes sense that it would be something that w- people don't say. But yeah, no, thought that was normal. <laughs> yeah. See, it's just like fixing to. You have to really think about it. Mm-hmm. And then another one is um, c- cut the lights off. Like I got to cut the lights off. People comment this all the time, cutting on and off the lights. Why is that so? Remi- I mean, I guess it's. Remi- I guess because cutting would be like cutting something. Cutting. Like literally, but we do cutting like cutting the light on and off. Cutting right. the light off, and I think it probably goes back to like cutting the circuit open. Yes, maybe like uh-huh. I think maybe I don't know that one. That one throws me too. There's a few more like that one cutting, and I think like I can't remember one right now. But yeah, those throw me off a lot because that's just like regular or like is it mashing a button? Do people say mashing a button? I don't think people say mashing a button. Other places, I don't think either. I don't think they do either. But I think that also this generation doesn't understand about like a dial in a dial in a phone. Like why do you yeah. dial a phone? Yeah. Like they don't understand that either, but that's generational because now right. they press buttons and we dialed the phone. Definitely. You know, my dad will tell you when he was growing up in Charleston, because it was so in the country that um, they would pick up the phone and there's an operator. And it's just like um, Andy Griffith. They would pick up the phone and be like, Hey, I mm. need you to get in touch with this person. They put them on. And then the operator would just sit on, listen to your conversation. That's how, that's how, or a party the game of line. telephone starts right there. <laughs> right. Or a party line where anybody on the street could pick up and listen to your phone call. Yes. <laughs> you know, like just anybody could listen because that was the one line. Oh my gosh. Okay. Let's see. How about, um, um, I about fell out. I just about, about fell, fell out. out. I just about fell out and had to take to the bed. If you were mm-hmm. almost about to fell out and, it, and falling out is a whole thing. Falling out is a thing you can yeah. do. Um, it is a thing that could be spiritual or it could be, in response to grief <laughs> or you could, or you just could like, be falling out laughing. You could fall out laughing. I know there's lots of ways to fall out and you can literally fall in this falling out or it can just be a spell, you know, <laughs> but yes. I, um, I like to say, you said this recently on one of yours. I like to, I, I used to take to the bed quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, and my husband will say your uh, mother has taken to the bed. It's a joke, but also I like to say, um, you've driven me to drink. I like mm-hmm. to say that. Driven me to drink and um, you're on my last mm-hmm. nerve. There's lots of ways to say that you're frustrated with, especially mm-hmm. with children. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Also going to hell in a handbasket. Hell in a handbasket um, is a whole yep. thing. You don't want to be accused of going to hell in a handbasket and you can be. No, I don't know why the handbasket. I don't know I don't, that. I why. don't know why the handbasket, but it's not something you want to be a part of. <laughs> um, how about, um, let's see, hotter, hotter than blue blazes. Hotter than blue blazes, Mm -hmm. hotter than blue blazes. And there's lots of things that are then blue blazes is good to go behind. (laughs) What about, um, ain't got the good sense. God gave a billy goat. The good sense. God gave a billy goat. (laughs) (laughs) That's a really nice way of selling somebody. They're an idiot. (laughs) Um, now crazy as a road lizard. That's pretty good. Um, Crazy as a road lizard. Um, I will say one, one of my favorite ones is sweating like a whore in church. Um, and I, uh Oh, are you still there? There we go. Yeah. Something happened. I don't know what it did. Sweating like a a whore in church. Mm -hmm. You don't want that to be going on either. No. And that really is true because we speak of the heat. So if you have to go to church on Sunday and it's hot in there and you got your fans, you don't want to be sweating like a whore in church. And I have Mm -hmm. a hilarious story about that. I have a friend who shan't be named. Back in, um, so I lived up here for a long time and then I came back to Mississippi and lived for four or five years, ended up marrying my husband, came back up here to Virginia. But in those um, three years, I guess I lived in Jackson, had a great group of like girlfriends who were late twenties, early thirties. And we would go out, we'd go to the dock, if you know, you know, and um, one night a friend of mine who shall not be named had a real good time at the dock and she met a guy there and everything. So the next day, Sunday, we all met for brunch or something. And she had gone out to Pearl, Mississippi, where her she her family was a member of a real cult, like serious, like Baptist church, not like a regular mm-hmm. Baptist, church, a real cult mm-hmm. one. Yep. They were like send you letters like Scientology saying you couldn't come anymore because they heard something about you. Yeah. Like real, real, real culty church. Mm-hmm. So we're sitting there at uh, lunch and we're like, "How was church?" And she goes, "Oh my God, it was so hot in there. I was just sweating so bad. It was terrible." And we go. <laughs> sweating like a whore in church and it was it was it was true in her case and we laughed so hard at it because we've never really had a chance to really use that as a real life example (laughs) she did so good letting y'all have that chance like she was the hero of the day she gave y'all the 
gave y'all the moment. <laughs> we talk about that all the time. And I tell that story all the time. I'm like, remember like so-and-so, she was sweating like a horn church because she was literally, literally the horn <laughs> church. So some of these, some of these things you do get to use them in your real life. Um, mm-hmm. Let's see. As all get out. I think that, do people everywhere not say as all get out? I don't think they do because I mentioned it the other day. As all get out is very good to add to thing. If you have, if, if it's as all get out, like if it's she's as, or you're, if you're as tired as all get out, you're real tired. If she was tacky as all get out, we're at maximum level. And now we understand. Yeah. I think we just like to modify it a little bit and be very clear about where we're standing. You know, <laughs> we're not yeah. just tacky. We're tacky as all get out. So we're very, right. very specific. I want you to have a, a clear picture. <laughs> What do you think would make somebody tacky? Oh, it's just tacky. I mean, tacky is subjective, right? But uh, mostly mm. tacky, I think, in the modern day. It used to, the, it, was, it was like, you know, you would never wear a black to a wedding. Now that's acceptable. There's like black wedding dress, wedding bridesmaids dresses and all those dresses. But that used, that kind of a thing used to be tacky. Now I think it's more general behavior. If you're acting out a lot, acting ugly is being tacky. Or if you're just yes. being straightforward direct to somebody without having a little couth about it being uncouth is tacky so i think tacky has evolved to more of a behavior than Mm -hmm. just a style but you can look tacky but usually if you're looking tacky here you are fully aware of it and are just leaning into it like leaning into it right like the hair i under know that my hair is four feet tall yeah i'm doing that on purpose you know like that would be so it's kind of just changed over time when i was younger tacky would have been a a a commentary on you, how you look sort of, but Mm -hmm. now I feel like it's more behavior than it used to be. I think you're right. But I think that like, if you went to um, the junior league black tie ball and a woman there came in with like some real boob show and like a real Mm -hmm. housewife situation definitely, Definitely. and was kind of drunk, then we'd be like, she was tacky. You're right. If you were wearing something really revealing and in like a very elegant place, people would say that was tacky. Though not to yeah. you, probably. Maybe later in the evening, but not directly. Well, do you think that, um, do people other places say she has no home training? I don't think people say that. I don't feel like, I feel like home training, that sounds pretty Southern to me. And that's so funny because this is a conversation me and my wife have all the time. We'll say something and be like, wait, was, <laughs> I think the other day we, she, she said ragamuffin and we were like, that sounds suspiciously like a southern saying <laughs> is that a... do you know okay so i know that you and your wife do watch not all but some bravo do you know that a couple of seasons ago on real housewives of beverly hills ragamuffin was a storyline because kyle richards said denise denise also richards now that i'm thinking about it but not related said that denise always looks like a ragamuffin because she always Amazing. had on like jeans and a t-shirt Okay, so that's good to know. It's not just us. It's that's other yeah. persons as well. Okay, all right. And Kyle is definitely see. a Calif. Yeah, she's a California mm-hmm. person, so she wouldn't have any knowledge. But yeah, she's that was like a whole storyline. Like, why did she call me a ragamuffin? And because that's she's so interesting that would be her because she reminds me of Southern women. Like, she's real not Spitfire, but she's got that oomph that all the ladies Denise? seem to have. Kyle, I feel like Kyle. Kyle. Has some, Kyle has some things. She could. She could do the South. I think. I think she could take. I think it. she could. I think she could blend. I think she could blend. Now, okay. Now, speaking of Bravo, tell me what y'all are watching. Well, what we are, are y'all really watching right now? Up. We just finished Summer House and went like all the Summer House types of situations, right? Mm-hmm. I watched last night. I called up on the OC, Real Housewives of OC, Orange County. Me too. Um, we did. I don't know if his Siesta Key is not Bravo. Um, and then just kind of like general it's general background so i have a pretty severe adhd so bravo keeps his company in the background of the day yeah you know? um yeah, so yeah. i just listen to these conversations in and out as it's going through the day but yeah it's prime season right now we're in some things what about um do you if you watch beverly hills do you know about sutton sutton so, track yes okay i mean does anybody really know about sutton like she's such a mystery to me but she's she's got the southern the Southern down. She's, she's, um, North Carolina, I believe. Mm-hmm. I believe she's North Carolina. I don't, she's South. I think she's North Carolina. But what's interesting about Sutton is that, um, she has been on the show now for a while, but you know, she, she married very well and was living in New York. Now she's accomplished by her own means. I'm not trying to say that she married right. into her money or what, I mean, she did marry into money, but she ended up getting a lot of money when she got divorced and good for her. 
And then she opened her store and she's back and forth between New York and um, Beverly Hills. So she could have really been on New York because she was a big New York socialite. But what's interesting about Sutton is she hasn't um, lost that accent at all. I, right, which I she love. hasn't. Mm -hmm. People And people can lose their accents a lot, but no, she hasn't. I really relate to her a lot, the way she speaks. Yeah, talking to, talking to you, my accent, of course, comes back when I'm talking. I bet you know, it, when I'm, it's going to get thicker by the end of it. If you call somebody, yeah. they're going to be like, where have you been? <laughs> um, when I go to the beach with my mom and my sisters and I recorded a few episodes from there, everybody's like, Mary Paint. And I was like, I know, I can't, I cannot help it. <laughs> I can't, it, it, it's just, that's my normal way of speaking. You won't but even realize it. But when I'm here, mm -hmm. I, no, I don't realize it. I'm not trying. I could tell right when I got on with you, I was like, oh, here it comes. Here, here it comes. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then it's just And coming. I can't, I can't do anything about it. That's the, y'all, that's the way I talk. But people will always say like, oh, she's got this great Southern accent. And I'm like, I have no accent compared to everybody in my family. I mean, really though, like if you went three miles out into the county from here, the accent would be so much thicker than mine. And I know it's just so thick for so many people. I can barely, but I don't hear it at all because you can really get into some accents. If but you that's get country. Out in the woods, you know, like you. But that's get, country. Mm -hmm, it is. You're right. I guess there is difference in southern and country. You're right. That's that is a difference. So it's hard to yeah. think of myself as having an accent. You know, your accent is. You have a beautiful southern accent, but your accent in country. Country's like this. Mm -hmm. You know, right. Mm -hmm. You know, I do have a ha real, real housewives person who follows me that comments on stuff every now and then, yeah. I, but I don't think she's still on the er Erica Jane. Yeah. She's still on. She's still on this. Yeah. I thought, yeah. Okay. I thought so too. Yeah. She's, she's from Atlanta originally. That's what I thought. She was on the Atlanta one originally. No, she's from Atlanta, okay. but she's on Beverly Hills. I tried to figure out how she ended up in Beverly Hills. For, okay, that makes sense. So she's from Atlanta. That's her Southern roots. Wonderful. She's from Good Atlanta. And then she she moved to New York and wanted to, you know, like everybody wanted to be an actress and whatever. And she um, was a stripper in New Jersey. And then she was married and had a child and then left New York, left the husband and the child there. They thought it was better. Went to L.A. and was a waitress. And that's where she met Tom Girardi, her now, you know, 87 year old, yeah. soon to be divorced, claims he has dementia, really doesn't husband. And yeah. that's, I mean, my God, I just told you that story. It's like a Southern story, but it's not. It's a Beverly Hills story. <laughs> that is a very Southern story, though. Like, that's, that's yeah. a very Southern story. Yeah. Well, she's um in my comments just as nice as she can be. I think it's just so wild. I love it. Um, and I used to get like nervous when I would have to, like they would comment cause I have to make a response. But the other day for the, like one of the first times she commented and I didn't like my heart rate didn't go crazy. <laughs> like you, I was like, you've just, gotten better about I it. I can just like be regular. So the, Erica Jane doesn't know it, but she's training me. Thank you, Erica Jane. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Tell me some other um, celebrity comments you've gotten. Oh, I mean, there's so many. The first one with Jennifer Garner shared my video and I was just like almost drop dead and where I Which was. one was it though? Which one um, was it? I think it was Bless Your I had a Bless Your Heart video a while back and she shared Bless, Bless Your, Your Heart. Heart. And then mm -hmm. Chrissy Teigen shared one and um she's been so nice. She like messages messaged me and invited me to come out there and all sorts of things and was just so kind about it. Um Wow. I've got a list. If I looked at my phone, there's like a whole list of them. The verified section is kind of out of control and I probably don't even know who most of them are but like I won't realize that it happened because the my notifications are kind of nuts it's hard yeah, to like right. see what what's happening at honestly yeah, like I lose right. a lot of stuff and for like two weeks Justin Timberlake was following me and I didn't know that um <laughs> well he's from Memphis I mean yeah he's he's southern but I just like didn't even know and then I saw that and was like but I've had to like just not think about that they're watching the stuff and just post it anyways because you can't if yeah you, if you thought about it being embarrassing for anybody to see it then you can't it wouldn't then be genuine or like real so it wild but miranda lambert likes the stuff off and leanne rhymes like i said she's she's in there i worked with hannah Love dasher it. she's a country star that is upcoming and she was really nice i did a video with her and she was she was just so yeah. kind but they're all just regular people and it's just so strange the uh the Gullah Gullah Island mom that one I was just like the who okay you know the show Gullah Gullah Island no you, how are you okay. spelling Gullah Gullah G U L L A H Gullah Gullah so history lesson okay the Gullah okay. Geechee are a people on the Carolina coast like that type of area and if I say anything wrong I'm, I apologize to the Gullah Geechee people um but they are where a lot of our southern superstitions come from that like that okay. culture they're like Hank Blue you know about Hank Blue you know about Hank Blue porches. Hank Blue Porch ceiling. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. We well, have to do the sealant. Yeah, what? the sealant is a specific color blue, and it yeah. keeps the bugs away. But the, the Haint Blue superstition came from the Gullah Gullah people, the Gullah Geechee. They believed that spirits didn't like to cross water, probably having to do with the transatlantic slave trade. They, the origins okay. of those stories, right? So they would Got paint it. like their shutters or their columns or their doors with this specific color, Haint Blue, to keep the Haints out of their house, to right? To keep the Haints away. And then it now, eventually now, evolved. I, right now, room. I'm stopping you right now because I know what a Haint is, but I oh. know that most people don't. So explain what a Haint yeah. is. A spirit, a ghost, something haunting okay. you, a, a not, yeah. not something that you want. So then it, it ended up on our porch ceilings, and then people noticed that the bugs thought it was the sky, so they won't put their houses there. Like, you won't get a bunch of wasps up there. And now it's just everywhere, and people pr- might not even know that's, like, where it comes from or what it represents but a lot of our stuff even down to the buildings comes from superstitions but Gullah Gullah Island was a, sh- a kids show like in um the 90s I think 90s maybe late 80s 90s probably because I was in high school at that time so I don't know about Gullah right. Gullah Island but I'm definitely gonna go look it up so it was like a I don't, and I'll say it, it was it was like a PBS type show I don't know what it was on but it was like uh-huh. public television and it was her and her yeah. like family and this like I'm so embarrassed I won't know what it was but it was just like not a stuffed animal, but like a puppet, not like a Barney, like Barney was a okay. dinosaur, a yeah. man in a suit. Yeah. It was uh-huh. like a something, like a chameleon or like a lizard. Anyways, okay. they, they had shows. It was Gullah Gullah Island. But some of your listeners will know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and okay. the, the okay. little thing in the suit would go, binya, binya. <laughs> anyways, <laughs> that, anyways, that mom, she is, she is a Gullah person, um, was just like iconic child mom to me you know so like okay. when she showed up I was like no I can't even deal with it so anytime I, she I feel like up, I, I'll just fall over I need to um I need to look um look up Gullah Gullah because we you know that's where we go to vacation we go to Bald Head yeah. Island in North Carolina yeah. right outside of Wilmington so I feel like oh, now I should you're gonna know. see it everywhere now you'll see it everywhere now that it's been mentioned you'll notice a lot of the stuff I feel like I really just got a good history lesson about um, the place that I one day want to live, Bald Head Island. I'm, I'm putting it out into the universe. Okay. Well, listen, I've taken up a lot of your time, but I'm so excited to talk to you and I'm glad now we're friends and we can text each other and everything. So for sure, th- this makes me very happy. I want to make sure I didn't miss anything from my family um, group chat because they'll be mad if I, um... <laughs> my mom said, um, don't forget about when you say he just up and died. Mm-hmm. He did. He just up my, and died. My mom's eighty-two, mm-hmm. so she's got up and died in her vocabulary. I don't know what up happened. He died. just up and died. Mm-hmm. He up and died, or up and took to the bed. Up and is good to put in front of a bunch of things. It's like a nice, a nice modifier. Um, up and died, and then uh, I say a lot, and I looked it up recently, and I can't remember why, but it's like you know, God willing, and the creek don't rise. Mm-hmm. Now I always thought that probably came from a Faulkner book about like the creek was going to rise and was going to flood a field or the cotton field or something, but it's not. It's actually about the creek Indians having an uprising. I've heard. Did that. you know that? I've heard yeah. that, but when I looked into it, I couldn't find like the real origin of it. But that is a thing people comment every time. Anytime I say Lord willing, the creek don't rise. And that's, I think that's a good example of just like the Haint Blue Ceiling. Things start in one place and turn into something completely different just by generations and time. And I think that's really neat about our culture because there's a lot of that stuff here. Uh, Yeah. I definitely thought it was the creek don't rise and floods the cotton fields. Like, and then because the creek will rise and you can't get to town. So that (laughs) it really is a problem. (laughs) It really is a problem that you can't get to town to get to the sunflower. So, it, yeah, okay. That, right. I just want to make sure I, I don't um, no, leave Lord out any of these phrases. I love to say something in the milk ain't clean. I wonder if they have heard of that. There's all sorts of really good ones. Now, I've never heard the milk ain't clean. What does that I mean, mean? Something in the milk ain't clean means something's not right with your story, with what's going on. Mm-hmm. Like the neighbor's mm-hmm. house isn't mowed. Something in the milk ain't clean. Something's up. Yes. Yeah. Oh God. Yes. I bet your yes. family will have heard that somebody. Maybe I don't know. Well, definitely the the because the people on this um text chain go from my dad's older brother who would be eighty seven down to all the way down to the youngest niece who just graduated from Ole Miss, so she would be like twenty one. So that's how big the list is. So that's my audience. If you're like night between mm-hmm. twenty and ninety, that's like who's following me. So <laughs> <laughs> so great. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, Landon, tell everybody 
where they can find you if they don't know, which I don't know if they're living under a rock, but tell everybody where they can find out about all your social media and your amazing TikTok slash Instagram. Well, thank you. You, you can find me on Instagram at Landon Talks, L-A-N-D-O-N-T-A-L-K-S. Um, and that's the same on TikTok. And then on YouTube, we're branching out of YouTube. We're getting it started over there. Um, and right now it's just longer discussions of what I'm do I do on Instagram and TikTok. But we're gonna we've got some ideas for over there. That's where you might find recipes and in person kind oh. of things. But it's Landon Talks a lot on YouTube. So Landon oh. Talks on Instagram. And yeah, you like that? And I was like, eh, I do. So clever. Um so Landon <laughs> Talks <laughs> So Landon Talks on Instagram, Landon Talks on TikTok, and Landon Talks a lot on YouTube. And there's some more things in the works, so maybe we'll get Maybe we'll get some things going soon. Um, but right now that's where you'll find me. And we've got the thing that I think is good about my situation. I love, to, I mean, I love to talk to everybody, but the comments section is where you need to go in my, yeah. on my social media. That's where the quality things are. <laughs> it's like the best comment community and they're kind and they're nice, but they're saying hilarious, absolutely hilarious things. And now I've like adopted like 250,000 or something of my own mother. So I'm like in for it, you know, like I can't get away with anything. This time I'll get a thousand comments about using, use a warm compress or, or get a potato yeah. peel, put a potato peel on it. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. You're like, I'm fine. I've got a doctor. I'm under the doctor. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm under the doctor. I'm going to use that. I'm going to have to say one and say that in one of my, my, my videos. My dad's name is bones. If you want to give him credit. Bones. Um. Okay. All right. <laughs> bones yeah because he used really to be skinny good. when he was little yeah Not nice uh, yeah. um and his tw his twin brother is greaser bones and greaser that's really good and really very lines up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. charleston mississippi mm -hmm. all right landon don't hang up but thank you very much and everybody um if you're listening here and you're listening to landon because of me please follow me on instagram which is at pink shade pod we put some funny reels up we just did a really funny one this week about counting the lies that louis said on the real housewives of new jersey reunion that's always a good time Hilarious. and we've been of course covering covering the scandal ball quite a bit and now we'll have to uh move into some other things i'm covering um Match Me Abroad, 90 Day Love in Paradise, 90 Day Before the 90 Days, about to cover 90 Day the other way. They're just giving us so much 90 Day content. And um, of course, on Thursdays, we're trying to rebrand from Bravo Breakdown to something fun. So Landon, if you think of a fun way I can rebrand my Thursdays where I do talk about Bravo, but I also talk to people I like and pop culture, yeah. trying to come up with a cute name. Yeah. Cute name. Papa Pink is good, but it's not great. Yeah. There's something there. There's something there. If you give it, give it a little time. I'm going to yeah. give a little time. Mm -hmm. I'm going to marinate on it. I'm going to yeah, marinate let it, on it. Let, it, let it steep for a little bit. I'm going to let it steep. Okay. Thanks, Landon. Thank you.